I'm interested in using HackerRank to become a better software developer. And I also want to make sure that when I set up a library that I'm going to use to solve a HackerRank challenge, that it's consistent with the way that I would set up a library when I'm solving a real world problem or you know doing something on the job or whatever. Um, I have found that it's hard for me to type and talk at the same time and so I also will be trying to avoid that. Uh, I'll either be typing or talking to the best of my ability not mixing the two. So let's get this thing started. Alright, so the first thing I want to do is prepare a little setup script, uh, just as if I were going to have something that could be readily installed in Python. This is one of the, I think this is, well, this is the only point where I'm actually going to refer to documentation. Just because I don't have that detail memorized, so let's, let's do this right. So that first line is going to allow us to use the uh, default to the users, um, to the Python in the user's current uh, path or shell, uh, depending on their environmental variables. It'll use the one that's right for them rather than necessarily trying to hard code it to some place on a, syst on a system that may be different on a different system from the one that it's being coded in. The second line uh, we're setting up, we're telling Python that we're prepared to use UTF-8 characters. The chances of me typing those are pretty, s actually putting in a UTF-8 rather than an ASCII character. Um, well, I guess everything is a UTF-8 character once I start using that format, but using a character that falls outside of ASCII is very unlikely during this particular process. Oof. Ugh. This is... Wow. That is weak. What are you doing, man? There we go. There we go. We can do this. particularly want to put in my email and I don't have a URL for this, it's not actually going to get off of my computer. Okay, so we've got a setup, now we've got two things to do. We've actually got to build the library. And the other thing I'm going to do first, though, is just prepare a virtual environment. Uh, virtual environments allow us to keep libraries separate between different, uh, between our, 
different projects. And that's great. I prefer the tool Vex. Uh, be I prefer the tool Vex specifically because we can create named can create named virtual environments and Vex will store them in a location separate from the actual project. So the uh, so the configuration of your system remains separate from the installation of the of the new um, of the new library that I've written. So when I distribute this, I'm I'm not also distributing things that are only specific. I'm not. You wouldn't distribute it anyway, but I'm not. I haven't tied the uh, the environment that's specific to my machine to the library that I'm getting ready to distribute. There's another neat feature, but I'm gonna. Wow, I'm gonna finish this first. I don't use Python three. It's a minor preference. Okay, and so it does it installs it. You can see right there, installs to a, a local virtual environment directory um, that's not part of the it's not part of the library that I'm working in. So the other thing that's cool about Vex now, so I go in here and I say which Python I'm currently using that Python that it just installed, and what's neat about this as opposed to um, the, I think it's called virtual env with the normal mechanism that, that gets distributed with like the typical process is that I'm actually in a different shell from the one that I started in and if, so I hit here and I hit exit right I'm st it looks like I'm still in the same shell but I'm not actually um, what actually happened was there was that Vex loaded up the loaded up the uh, path and the other and other uh, environmental variables it needed and prepared them to a new um, for a new for a new process and that new process was the the shell that I was just in. And so it started a new shell with the new environmental variables and put me in that shell. And that's just a, a much cleaner way of doing it than trying to stick the environmental variables on the shell that you're currently in and then trying to like manage changing things back and forth through things, scripts and stuff. It's just, why not just create a new process? And then the nice thing about that it also is that when I want to do something like set this up as a, build something that's going to be run as a cron job, right? The cron job doesn't actually have to figure out how to be in a shell that it's not in or any of that stuff. It's just, okay, Vex itself will set up the uh, set up the new process with the environmental variables, maybe without a shell at all, and that's fine. So let's get back into that. Get back into a, well, it's a new shell. Get into a new shell with the right settings. And let's make these libraries. Now the first thing I'm going to do here is actually go and make the tests. If you are using HackerRank, I strongly encourage you to take advantage of the fact that you can, in fact, write your tests. If you are not writing tests, my hypothesis is your boss told you not to. <laughs> it may be that there are programmers that like doing t writing code without testing it, while you know, without having automated testing in to help them. But I, I. I think that's unlikely. Well, there's got to be somebody, but I feel like most of the time, most of the time, it's somebody's boss told you not to do it because the boss thinks that it's too time consuming. And there's a little bit of truth to the fact that it takes longer to get things done right. Uh, in the short term, it takes longer to do it right. So, uh, make the test.
Python unit testing is pretty uh, straightforward and yeah I like this I actually like this thing just for its own sake It's worth noting that these tests are not actually just for, uh, not specifically for uh, unit testing the whole thing. They're actually, this is for developing it first. And the first thing I'm going to write, you probably wouldn't keep in a production setup, but I like doing it just because it helps me get started. first time I saw someone do this I thought it was kind of funny and right now all I'm going to be doing with this is just making sure that I have not made any glaring mistakes in terms of syntax uh, I haven't accidentally you know I've gotten the case the case structure of the unit test library wrong or something so it's just can I actually write a unit test that executes and I'm getting stumped because I'm trying to think and type at the same time what I want to do is also give this all this default behavior that it will when I run this uh, in this case it's a test library but when I run any a library that might be run as an actual application I want to have a default behavior and not just load things and disappear I think that's it. So if I do this correctly, I can now run this. And I'm actually in that directory. Let's get back out because this is how you would do it. And it ran. So good. It looks like I still know Python syntax. Thank goodness. Once, once you were finished with this and you saw that everything is loaded, the next thing you could actually do is go ahead and delete the tests. But we haven't actually fully loaded. We haven't even written the library yet. So now it should fail. You don't have to run this right now, but I'm just doing it so that you can see, or so that I can see. good here. That's like that's the expected behavior. Now did I remember to touch that? I did, okay. But I didn't do it here, so
I do not expect this thing to be run independently from loading it, so I'm not giving it that environmental. Uh, I'm not telling it to, to load Python. It doesn't really load Python, but I'm not I'm not talking to it directly. So normally, if I were uh, writing a, a library that's going to have a lot of, will have more than one class or more, just more things going on, I would write each individual uh, component in a separate file, and I would load those files. And because I'm not doing that, and because I saw someone who was much smarter than me do it this way, and, and it stuck. Um, I'm actually going to, in this particular case, I'm just going to put the one core library in a separate file, just to be consistent about the fact that the init um, for a library is just going to be used to, to import the correct uh, subcomponents for anyone using it from the larger system. So I wrote that next directory. So this one does have a default behavior because because if I can type it um, this one does have a default behavior uh, because you're going to be writing ultimately when you're if especially if you're writing this for hacker rank you're actually just going to be write, cutting and pasting the entire thing directly into a hacker rank window uh, you're not going to be sending them all these unit tests and all this other stuff it's just going to be this piece right here and I think it's true and oh let's not do it let's not forget this either There's two ways to run unit tests. This would run all of them, and it works. Uh, the other way was I did that before, but let's just do it that way too. Yeah, no, I did it before, it's fine. What did I do differently? Oh, <laughs> let's uh, let's fix that. Nope. If I'm right, and I think that I am, pip install. This sh should fix that particular bug. If the setup is set up, the setup is done right. It actually installed, and let's try that again. Yep, there we go. So, yeah. So one of the things that you got to watch out for is if you want to uh, run the thing, you actually uh, run a specific uh, program, and you don't have something like uh, the unit tests module to find what's importing and stuff for you, which is, I guess, what happened there. Um, then you gotta actually make sure it's installed and when you install it if you uh, were installing something that you were currently developing um, globally it would be really obnoxious so it's nice to have it that you have it in a virtual environment the other thing that you might have noticed is that dash e right here that dash e is there so that when it basically tells uh, pip to install the library in such a way that I'm expecting. Let's uh, look at the help for that. 
uh, but telling Pip to install that so, in such a way that while I'm developing it, um, if I make changes, it's going to catch those changes every time I run it, rather than uh, installing a static version as if a static version as if it was like a finished product, and then keeping it the same way. Uh, let's see here. It stands for. Is it the dash exist default action? No, that's not the one I wanted. Ah. Editable, yeah, there it is. Install a project in editable mode, develop mode from a local project or VCS URL. That's not really clear uh, in terms of what it means if you don't already. I mean, it's clearish. It's, it's sort of clear, but it basically just means that when I change, when I go in and change how the how the library behaves, that that is, uh, it is immediately, it immediately affects that particular installation. In any case. Uh, that's how I'm going to set these. That's how you're going to set up your. How I'm going to set up my, and maybe you'll set up your um, hacker rank uh, libraries, and maybe all your all your Python libraries, um, at least in the most general sense. Uh, and is there anything else? I think. Oh yeah, there is one little detail. Uh, the other thing you got to watch out for is the hacker rank relies on standard in and standard out and with Python the one thing you need to know about stand, uh, about taking input is just just use uh, it's just called input uh, it's just a that is the name of uh, the function you need to call it's just input and that handles the whole thing of collecting input from the user um, I'm also going to be looking at another language that and I've actually seen a couple of languages where it's a little bit more complicated than that, but and for those I'm going to have to make sure that I actually understand them <laughs> better than I do right now because I am trying to pick up uh, a couple other things. But for Python, you just need to know it's like this. Can't do that on Bash though. All right, stop. <laughs>